Okay. Other than the simple solid state reaction or SSR, there are many other different ways to synthesize or produce the material, in this case ceramic material that you want. And one of them is called precipitation. And sometimes you can precipitate from the solution the things you want directly. Sometimes after precipitation, it has to go through some types of solid state reaction to get your final product. Okay, precipitation, as we know, is pr production of ceramic powder or ceramic precursor powder material um, by precipitation, something coming out from solution, uniform solution, via certain chemical reaction. Okay, and uh, it's typically homogeneous nucleation in most cases. Homogeneous means what? Everywhere, which means when you mix the solution, the precipitation starts to happen hmm, pretty much everywhere in the solution. It's not like, okay, only at the bottom of the beaker or only at the top. Make sense? That homogeneous nucleation just means forming the initial seed, the initial nucleates. It's happening everywhere, uniformly, okay, typically. And here I borrowed some schematic from the internet. We have initially uniform solution, and then after some reaction happens, this could happen by when you heat it up, the initial solution, or you add something that helps it to precipitate. Okay? And then it's no longer what? Uniform. It becomes heterogeneous, but it's Homogeneous nucleation means it's happening what? Everywhere through this solution. And each of these tiny dots, we call it a small seed or small nuclei. Make sense? Nucleus. And, and of course, once the particle comes, if the density is higher than what? Your solvent, right? Then it will go to the bottom, which is typical. Most of the solids that we are dealing with other than organics are heavier or more dense than quite often water or your common other solvents. Make sense? So that's a fundamental process. Precipitation from dissolved metal salts. I give you one example which we actually looked at the other day, right? The same thing. You start from, read to yourself, nickel, sulfate, and Ferrous, I would call it the iron sulfate. Ferrous means iron is at 2 plus. Okay. And as this, what people call ammonium oxalate. Anyway, it's a compound between organic and inorganic. Very simple, small molecule. And then we get a nickel, I would call it a nickel iron oxalate precipitated out, which means this guy is at the bottom. Okay, plus the ammonia part and the sulfate part come together become ammonium sulfate. And of course, is this balanced? No, that's what we said. And how do we balance? Well, how many nickel I have on the left? One, how many nickel I have on the right? Point two, which means I have to add a factor of five here, right? And then naturally, when I have five here, how many iron? Now it's four. So iron, I should have four, makes sense, right? Then quickly five and four in there. And then let's see, look at the left side. Do, do I have any other sulfate groups? No, right? That's about it. No sulfate group here. So one sulfate plus four sulfate, totally how many sulfate groups? Five, which means on the right side, now you have five sulfate groups, right? And then the last thing you want to check is for the ammonia group. How many ammonia group are on the right side? Here, this guy has no sulfate group. So it's five times two, 10 sulfate group. And here I have two, which means at in the beginning, I need five. Of course, you can also check for the oxalate group, the C2O4 oxalate group. Is that balanced? Five of C2O4. This side, 5 of C2O4. Very quick, right? You can do it quickly. Makes sense? You start from one species, quite often the one that is simplest. 
only appearing in one. If I start from sulfate, I will be confused because it's appearing at two different uh, chemicals on the left side. Make sense? I start with something that has appearing one and go through one and then you see the process. Okay. And precipitation from organometallic compound related but now your organometallic which means metal alkoxide the metal is not a simple inorganic salt it contains some organic group and i'm giving one example already balanced and you may try to balance it yourself notice here i even have what in here x because the one of the product the titanium oxide dioxide hydroxide but i'm not i'm not sure of the extent of hydration so i put x here you put x here but somehow we can still balance it make sense so go try yourself do these type of things yourself okay remove all the all the factors and see whether you can balance it yourself as an exercise for yourself okay and uh, the factors that influence nucleation growth nucleation forming of the small seed or nucleus and the growth is for the small seed to grow from small particle growing into larger particle and deep, which these two together determines the precipitate size and sometimes also morphology the shape right believe it or not it depends if you give it a time quite often it de develops into more of the ideal crystal if you don't give it a time it may develop into quite often the uniaxial spherical shape make sense so precipitate size if you want nano versus you want a big crystal there are different uh, things you have to consider make sense they are for different uh, application and uh, these things that determines the Nucleation growth or size and morphology include reactant and solvent type. Different reactant may have different property. Solvent, I'm using the same chemical, but I'm using water as my, as my solvent versus I'm using alcohol as my solvent. It may be different. Reaction may be happening slightly different way. Okay. And the reaction temperature and time. This is about reaction condition, I said. Right? What temperature are you going to do it? I can carry out precipitation, put that precipitation solution in ice, which means I try to what? Cool it down, reduce the temperature, or I can put it down to a hot plate. Make sense? These things that you can do. And time, how long do you carry it out? Sometimes you saw this word, read to yourself, aging. <laughs> aging which means you put that solution you put that in a temperature humidity controlled and condition and just wait for something to happen in by themselves called aging it's not it's going bad going older but sometimes by doing this so-called aging the system become more homogenized make sense more uh, approaching what the equilibrium should dictate okay other condition like ph or concentration and uh, this method is actually extensively used for lab scale synthesis of fine especially nanoparticles for example the lithium cobalt oxide or related lithium magnesium oxide quite often can be got from these type of precipitation reaction and here the nickel ion oxalate quite often is not a, it's not the final product and quite often we have to heat treat this guy going through decomposition reaction to give us nickel iron oxide that is quite often the end product not this guy okay but this guy gives me the nano feature of the powder and then a low temperature heat treatment i got what i want the organics the carbon would go away make sense 